Former Texas Governor Rick Perry will follow his comments with your reaction on phone, Twitter, and Facebook. Inside looking out this window at this view, listening to our Star Spangled Banner be sung by an extraordinary talent. If that ain't America, you can't find it. It is good to be back in Iowa. Thank you very much. This is an extraordinary state, and it reminds me a lot as I travel across lots of miles of it. It reminds me of the little place I grew up, 200 miles west of Fort Worth, Texas, in Haskell County, a little community called Paint Creek. Paint Creek wasn't even big enough to have a post office. It was 16 miles the closest place it had that post office in Haskell, Texas, but it was where I called home. And the values I learned there shape my worldview still today. Those values are hard work. Those values are the dignity of having a job. Those values of serving your country, serving your state, serving your fellow man. Being able to give back to this incredible country that has given all of us the opportunity to succeed. One of the reasons I want to be your president is because I think all too often some of those opportunities aren't where they could be today, should be today, because Washington, D.C. has decided that they are the fount of all wisdom. Washington, D.C. has decided that all decisions need to be made there. You know what my answer to Washington, D.C. is? I'm mad as hell and I'm going to do something about it to change it. I think that's what this election is reflecting, is people having a belly full of all the decisions trying to be made 1,500 miles away from where they need to be made right here in this state. I think it was Dwight David Eisenhower said, you know, it's pretty easy to farm when your plow is a pencil and you're 1,500 miles away from the farm. And that is what we're facing today. And as we've seen this continual consolidation of power in Washington, D.C., a place that has now become corrupt, a place that we don't trust, and a place that I will suggest to you is making America less of a place than it could be if we have the decisions devolved back to the states. I'm a big believer in the Constitution of the United States of America. I put my hand up and I swore allegiance to the Constitution of the United States as I wore the uniform of this country as a pilot in the United States Air Force from 1972 to 77. My father did the same thing. My dad was a B-17 tail gunner in 1944 and early part of 1945, flew 35 missions over Nazi-held Germany to help liberate that continent. My dad wanted to come home, live in peace, get married and farm. And that's what he did. My dad is a 90-year-old man living out in Paint Creek, Texas today. But he taught me every day about giving back to my country, giving back to my state, giving back to my community. He understood that public service is an honorable thing and that America is great because there are men and women who hold up their hand and say, here am I, send me. And there's a lot of different ways that you can volunteer in this country. And to give back to this country, I think it's one of the reasons we are a unique country. You can join the Peace Corps, or you can join the Marine Corps, or anything in between. But give back to this country. That is what we need in this country again, is Americans who believe in the American dream, Americans that believe that you can attain the American dream. And we're not going to do it unless we deconstruct that crap that's going on in Washington, D.C. I'm telling you, that is, the, that is the challenge of our lifetime. And you need a leader that understands how to do that. I want to share with you is, is I, I was the governor of the state of Texas for 14 years and unquestionably it is a place that is I will suggest economically one of the great places to live in the world and it's that way because we freed people from over taxation and over regulation and over litigation and we gave people the opportunity to attain anything they wanted in their lives because we gave them the opportunity to graduate from high school and then go on to that next stage in life. From 19, or excuse me, from 2003 until 2013, 
We went from 27th in the nation in high school graduation rates to the second highest graduation rates in America. If you're Hispanic or African American, you live in the state that has the highest high school graduation rates in America. You want to send a powerful message across this country, you free up these states to make those decisions. I believe in this Constitution. Our Constitution was created by an incredibly, incredibly visionary people. You think about what that Constitution says. It clearly enumerates the powers that we're supposed to do as a federal government. It enumerates them. We're supposed to stand a strong military. Today we have the smallest personnel in the Army than we've had since 1940 in this country. We're down to one fighter into production, the F-35. We're down to 10 carriers. We're, we should have 13 carriers at least to be able to protect commerce, protect our allies in this country. We're down to our Ohio-class submarines being the last, they're the third leg of our nuclear triad. And we're down to the last years of their useful life and we don't have a plan to replace them or to refurbish them. I'm worried about where we are in the world because our military has been hollowed out. And our Constitution tells us to do something else in this country, and that is to secure our border. Wouldn't it be awesome if the federal government got those two things right? Then we can have a conversation about if there's anything else the federal government needs to be engaged with. The idea that Washington, D.C. is deciding what our children's curriculum for education is, is nonsense. The idea that Washington, D.C. should be telling us how to deliver health care is nonsense. The idea that Washington, D.C. should tell us how to do transportation infrastructure, that should be left for the states. Because if Washington would take a look at the Constitution and read the Bill of Rights, it would get up to the Tenth Amendment that says that the power is not delegated to the, con or to the federal government by the Constitution are reserved for the states or for the individual. Let's get back to being a constitutional country. Read the Constitution. Believe in the Constitution. Apply the Constitution. That's what we've got to do. We need a we need a president of the United States that's got a record of delivering. We I, listen. You're going to hear a lot of people stand on this stage, and they're going to tell you a lot of good things. But all too often, it's just rhetoric. I think it's time, and I hope you agree that we have a president. Listen, we're going to have eight years of a young, inexperienced United States senator. And I think from my perspective, he has gotten us in the ditch economically, and he has gotten us in the ditch from a foreign policy standpoint. It's time for a president of the United States that actually has a record. This is going to be a show-me-don't-tell-me election. Show me what you've done. That's what I'm talking about. Show me what you have done as the leader of the 12th largest economy in the world. Here's what I want to tell you about. If you want to talk about how an individual is going to react, I've already got that record. Nobody gave me a handbook that said, Perry, here's how you deal with a space shuttle that's going to disintegrate over your state. Nobody said, here's how you're going to deal with this massive amount of people that are going to show up on your border moving away from a hurricane called Katrina. And your state is going to receive all of these people from Louisiana. Last summer, nobody gave me the how-to book. When people massed on our border, being driven by transnational gangs and drug cartels, trying to get into this country, and our federal government absolutely had failed to secure our border, nobody gave me the book that said, here's how you deal with that, Perry. And almost a year ago, nobody gave me the manual that said, listen, this is how you're going to deal with a disease that has scared the world, that's coming to America, and it's going to show up in your state first, and I'm talking about Ebola. But Americans got to see in every one of those cases leadership by example. And Americans saw a competent and confident governor, 
and the people of that state dealing with all of that myriad of issues. They've got to see how we deal with an economy, creating the most dynamic economy in the country. We created 1.5 million jobs from the end of 2007 to the end of 2014, while the rest of the country lost 400,000 jobs. I don't think that was an accident. It happened because we allowed the people to have the freedom to keep more of what they worked for. People to have the opportunity to know that the government's not going to strangle them with these regulations. I think that's what this country needs is a proven leader who day in and day out will go to the Oval Office and make Washington, D.C. as inconsequential in your lives as we can make it. That's what this country is looking for. I know how to do this. I've got a record of being able to put in place tax policy, regulatory policy, and reaching across the line. I don't mind working with Democrats. If you believe in America and you want a better future, I don't care which political party. As a matter of fact, Democrats and Republicans have fouled it up in Washington, D.C. We need somebody that will go there, put this country back on track to the greatness, the greatness of which my father was a part of. I took my dad back to that old air base where he served in 1944. As a 19-year-old young man, he got on that B-17 35 times. And they trundled down that runway with a bomb-laden B-17 to a very uncertain future. I took my dad back there some years ago, and it was a powerful moment for a son to be able to stand 60 miles away from where I was stationed at RAF Mildenhall with my dad and talk about the most powerful time in his life and what it meant to him. My dad and I left that air station and we crossed the English Channel on our way to Point de Hoc. My dad made the comment as we were halfway across the English Channel, he said, son, this is my 71st trip across the English Channel. On the 6th of June, on that windswept plain above that beach called Omaha, my dad and I celebrated in memory of those 4,000 plus young Americans. Those 4,000 graves that are on top of that windswept plain. The sacrifice that young Americans have made for our todays. Young Americans who gave their todays for our tomorrows. 4,000 plus graves, those white crosses and stars of David, reflecting extraordinary sacrifice. And it struck me standing there looking at that, looking at that vista. Every one of those graves look west. They look west across the Atlantic Ocean, west to America, west to the America that those young Americans would never go home to, an America they loved. I think they are there in silent judgment of us. And we have to ask ourselves, have we lived up to their sacrifice? Have we earned their respect? The way we live our lives today, the way that we are engaged in this process of democracy in America. Well, I know one thing. The people of Iowa understand that. The people of Iowa that vet these candidates, the people of Iowa that expect us to be here, to come to our hometowns, to talk to us that you can ask the questions of, of what's your idea about how to get this country back on track. 
I believe in this country's future. I believe that those men sacrificed, those young Americans sacrificed, was worth every bit of it. And over the course of the next six months, as we come to Iowa often, we're going to have the opportunity to talk about our visions. We're going to have the opportunity to talk about the future of this country. I happen to think the future of this country is bright. Yeah, there's things to be pessimistic about. I know we can do better. You know we can do better economically. We turn on TV and we see Coptic Christians being led to a beach in, in, in uh, the northern Africa and be murdered by ISIS. There are things out there in the world that give us a little bit of pause and we're pessimistic about. But I'll suggest to you that our best days in this country are ahead of us. Our best days in this country are ahead of us because I believe with all my heart we're just a few good policy decisions and a leadership change at the top from the best days of America's future. I believe this with all my heart. I know that we can put into place policies that will free Americans from overtaxation. And it starts with breaking up that cabal in Washington, D.C. It starts by devolving that power back to the states. I believe with all my heart that the governors of these states and the governor, whether it's Iowa or Texas or some of one of the other 48 states, they know better how to deliver education curriculum to your children than some bureaucrat in Washington, D.C. That's why I'm against Common Core. I believe with all my heart that the people of Iowa know how to come up with ways to deliver health care to your citizens. That will do it more efficiently, more effectively than some bureaucrat in Washington, D.C. You pick what you want. You want Washington making those decisions or do you want the people of Iowa making those decisions? I'm going to stand with the people of Iowa every time. I'm going to stand with the people of this country every time. I want to be your president because I know our best days are ahead of us. If you'll give me your support, I will make you proud of the work that comes out of Washington, D.C., because it's going to be incredibly limited from compared to what it is today. God bless you. Thank you all for letting us come and be a part of this today. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Carol.